Hey guys, uh, it's been a while since my last video blog, so I decided what better reason to do a video blog than the release of Call of Duty Black Ops 2, the biggest video game in the history of video games that's going to set the world on fire, and everyone is going to quit their jobs because all they want to do is play more Call of Duty at home, and that's the kind of effect that it's going to have on the video game industry in the world, right? Right? Uh... Uh, maybe. Uh, probably not. Um, let me just first start by saying Call of Duty is an interesting franchise because on the one hand it is a very good first-person shooter uh, series, but on the other hand it's it's gotten this fan base, this popularity, this maniacal, fanatic fan base that just kind of blows everything out of proportion and it kind of makes a really good series uh, get this really bad light about, or really bad aura about it. Um, and so going into Black Ops 2, uh, you know, I was expecting a lot of more of the same. You know, Modern Warfare 3 came out last year, and it wasn't a huge improvement over Modern Warfare 2. They had a couple of cool things in the uh, Spec Ops modes and all that stuff. But ultimately, you know, if you had Modern Warfare 2, there was really no huge reason to upgrade to, to Modern Warfare 3. Um, so going into Black Ops 2, you know, I wasn't really that excited. Um, and obviously the reviews are out. You can see IGN saying, this is not the shooter you expected. What if Call of Duty was different? <laughs> and I think that's a little go going a little bit too far with uh, how much Black Ops 2 has changed, but I do think Treyarch deserves some massive props for trying some some new things with uh, with Black Ops 2, and some of them work, some of them need some uh, help with the execution, but like I said, I, I think Treyarch did do some cool things with Black Ops 2 that are a little bit different from the mold, but ultimately, at its core, the single-player campaign of Black Ops is still the same old, like, whack-a-mole first-person shooter where you just you, you sit in cover, you wait for a, an enemy to pop up, you shoot them, you, you, know, you bring down the sights to a quick aim, bring down the sights quick aim, bring down the sights quick aim. You're not even looking for people. You're just using the, the auto-aim feature of your, your gun to show you where the enemies are and just pressing a quick tap of the the, the tri right trigger to shoot and that is just so old and uh, I'm so sick of it um, but the strike force missions are actually really interesting um, there's I think four four of them and basically they put you in control of like a kind of overseer who is able to look down on the battle and each strike force has different objectives. There's the first one has a uh, has one where you have to defend three points, uh, and if two of the points go down, then you have to go inside and defend this one last point. Which and if that goes down, you lose the strike force mission. And what's interesting about it is you can jump out of a of a individual character, look at the screen from a top down view choose an, uh, another, you know, like a sentry turret or something, go and control that, shoot a bunch of things, clear that area, jump out, take this, you know, giant mech that walks around really slowly but is like, you know, a beast and can just mow down enemies, you know, mow down the group over there, go back to, uh, you know, an infantry unit, move the turret to a new, another location, and it's just really interesting. It's, um... Like, if there was more of that and the execution was better, the AI was better, you could trust your own units without having to jump between them. If that was a little bit better, this would be huge, I think. Um, I really hope that in future installments of Call of Duty, they they really work on bringing the Strike Force idea from the ground up, kind of like what they did with Zombies, and maybe even make it its own, its own thing. Uh, because I think it's a really interesting concept. And it's very varied. They have different, you know, like I said, different objectives. One of them you have to, you know, clear this one area and assassinate a guy. Um, and yeah, strike force missions, cool. They are really difficult, 
Um, but they, they still have some issues. They're a little bit frustrating. And, yeah. But, like I said, cool. Um, so, yeah. And the most impressive thing, I think, about Call of Duty's uh, Modern Warfare 2... Oh, not Modern Warfare. Black Ops 2's campaign is how adaptive the story is. Like, they'll have portions of it where you don't really know that you're making a choice. You're you're either following orders or you're not following orders. They could be like, you know, follow this, you know, chase down this uh, this person who's kidnapping, you know, a, a VIP. And if you fail, you don't fail that checkpoint. It goes on to another strike force mission where you have to rescue that person. If you don't do that, then you 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 miss your chance. You you don't save that person. She's not part of the story. The story moves on. So I think it's a really cool idea of consequence uh, for your choices and a lot of the times like, it's, it's not like a Mass Effect thing where you have three choices and you choose you know whichever one you want it's a in the action you know decision of kill this person don't kill this person you know try as hard as you can to rescue this person if you fail you know you fail and I think that is a very forward-thinking uh, method of you know pushing this Call of Duty franchise forward a little but ultimately they, again it comes back to the core gameplay of Call of Duty which is the you know stop and pop whack-a-mole first person shooter kind of thing which is kind of wearing out its welcome and quite honestly there are there's sometimes in the the campaign where I'm just falling asleep just <laughs> auto aim fire auto aim fire auto aim fire get get down oh I'm hurt grenade oh run to the next piece of cover Auto aim fire, auto aim fire. Um, so yeah, that's campaign multiplayer. You know, multiplayer is more, pretty much more the same. They, the multiplayer is probably the thing that has the least amount of improvements to it. But it's Call of Duty. Everyone's gonna love it. You know, the people who love Call of Duty multiplayer are still gonna love Call of Duty multiplayer. The people who don't are still gonna complain about getting shot in the back all the time, and uh, how if if it was a fair fight they would always win. But uh, yeah, that's that's Call of Duty mul multiplayer for you. And then there's Zombies, which has exploded into its own thing. Um, the transit level, I think there's going to be some... Uh, I don't I don't think people are going to like it as much as they as Treyarch maybe expects them to. It is a little bit too big, a little bit too convoluted. Um, it takes a little too long to get to you know places where you want to go. Um, but it's interesting. Like I said, I, I think Treyarch deserves praise for trying something new. Um, and they also have, you know, the, the, the tighter, you know, survival modes where it's a smaller area. You don't have to worry about the bus. Um, but yeah, I think, again, good idea. Questionable execution. Uh, I think if you want to read a really good review, and I, you know, this is going to sound like self promote self-promotion, but I truly believe that Phil Hornshaw wrote a really fair and uh, balanced review. I don't want to sound like Fox News, but uh, it's a very fair review of Black Ops 2 on the Gamefront site, and I highly suggest you check that out if you're interested at all in Black Ops 2, if you're on the fence. I know there's not a lot of people that are on the fence with a Call of Duty game, um, but yeah. So that's my, that's my whole thing. Thanks for watching, everyone. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.